Well, good morning, Living Water. Uh, we just welcome everybody here this morning. It is great to see all of you. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and uh, let's just begin this morning with uh, some prayer before we start worshiping God. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for summertime and just uh, the ability to go out to freely um, worship you everywhere we go, Lord, to bring you with us, to see where you're working, to join you there. And um, we just pray that you would um, bless us this morning, that you would light a fire in our soul, Lord, and, and that we would just be desire to do the things that you lead us to this week. Please stand as we begin worshiping. Amen. time. 
No place. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. All the earth, all 
this morning that it would speak to us individually and in whatever way we need it Lord we just acknowledge your your power Lord your omnipotence Lord you know everything that is going on in our lives Lord and we just pray that 
we would have peace, that you are there in the midst. We pray for John, Lord, give him the words this morning, be with him. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. so wonderful to worship God with all of you this morning. He is our great Lord. Um, my name is Melissa Miller, and I have the privilege of being part of the kids ministry team here at Living Water. Um, and I wanted to just talk to you for a few minutes to let you know of what's going to be happening. Well, some of the plans for this fall. First of all, if you've looked around, there are a lot of kids around here. And summer is always a time where we always tend to scatter and kind of refresh ourselves with different schedules. Um, I think COVID has also helped in that scattering. And so as we are rejoining in the fall, um, I think it's really important that we come together and connect as a church family. And so I'd like to extend a special invitation to all the families out there with kids from nursery on up to fifth grade. Um, we want to reconnect with you. We want to see you face to face and be together. And so what better way to do that than to eat together? So I would like to invite you to a pancake breakfast on August 30th, it's Sunday, before the service, at 9.30. So we'll have pancakes, okay? Everybody like pancakes? Kiddos? Pancakes? All right. We'd like to have um, all the families get together so that we can just reconnect because it feels like it's been so long since we've been together. And we've had kids grow up and kind of move out of the, the, the realm of kids' ministry, but we've also had kids kind of move and change stages and we want to know who our families are so that we can best minister to you now some of you are going i don't have kids well i have news for you in a way you do because you're a part of our body and one of the things that we would love to see in our kids ministry is that it's not just a mindset of we only minister to kids if you have kids but that we're all in this boat together because God has blessed all of us with this family of people that are looking to bring God glory and be discipled. So if you are interested in serving kids, we would also love to have you join us that day so that we can connect with you. We are really in need of some people to come alongside and support the ministry by helping in the nursery or helping with preschoolers. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to do everything. If you're going, I am not a teacher, I'm gonna tune you out right now. There might be something that God wants you to do. So I would challenge you just to be um, praying and seeing is there some way that God would like to connect you with some of the kids that are around us because we really want them to know Christ's love, to experience that while they're here and to become followers of him. So if you would join us in praying, and if you're a family, can you mark August 30th at 930 down on your calendars so that we can see you face to face? We would love to do that. So thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Well, hello, everybody. Good morning. I think the rain's going to hold off. I don't know. Pray it does. <laughs> um, yeah, so as Melissa said, we do need a lot of help. We're excited to get our kids' ministry going again. Um, I know some of your parents are really excited as well, um, <laughs> but we are going to, as I mean, our church has, has grown um, since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, and it's been great to see, and I think God's doing amazing things in this place, and I think you continue to do amazing things, and with, with that means we need help um, in every different area. I mean, obviously, kids' ministry needs help because um, more and more of you guys have a lot of kids, and so <laughs> more kids we have, more help we're going to need. Um, but in not just the kids' ministry, but in probably every aspect of our church, um, we, we, need, we need volunteers, and we need help in every different as aspect of that of our church. And so um, each week, we're not, maybe not every single week, but we're going to have different people come up and kind of share um, periodically throughout the next couple weeks, especially as we kind of come back together. We're planning on moving back inside uh, the 13th, so we're going to be not outside anymore. We don't have to worry about rain coming in or um, snow. That's, that's coming, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we are going to be moving inside the 13th, September 13th, and with that, it's going to come 
a lot of our ministries come, ministry teams coming back together. Uh, we want to get community groups going again. Uh, our uh, core classes, Sunday school, getting that up and running again. And so all this stuff's going to take all of us coming back together and uh, serving in, in some way. And so if you're interested in that, next step card. Uh, they're at the welcome table now, so you can go there, write maybe any interest you have in different ministries, and we'll uh, get in contact with you. And just some really quick announcements before we dive in. Um, Growing Together class, it's uh, next Sunday, right after service. Uh, um, it basically, what this class is, if you're interested in becoming a member or you just want to know about our church, you don't have to... Um, become a member, but maybe you want to find out uh, more about us, our vision, our mission, uh, who we are as a church, um, that's the, the class to go to. It's right after the service. Lunch will be provided for that. And so I would encourage any of you guys that are new, um, that are interested in, like I said, either attending or becoming a member, definitely come to that and find out more about it. Um, we'd ask you, it would sign up for it, just so we know who's coming. Uh, next step card, once again, the welcome table, you can sign up for that. Um, is there some other announcements in the worship guide? I'm not going to dive into all of them. One big thing that I want to highlight really quick before we get into our sermon this morning is our food cart ministry. Um, it, it's it's really amazing what God has been doing through this. Um, some of you have kind of seen this evolve through, through the entire time, and it's been awesome to see what God is doing. Uh, and I could share many different things. Like, uh, for instance, we... Some of you guys don't know, we gave out 71 Bibles. We're going to continue to give Bibles out um, throughout this entire, uh, at the food cart, we're still handing Bibles out. But when we're doing delivery, we were handing 71 of them, one of them out. Why so on? Okay. My voice like, didn't echo anymore. Um, and also, like, it, it, a big thing to remember, I think, in a lot of this is I, what I have seen happen is we are, I, what I'm kind of understanding is where we are making or building bridges with the community um, where in a way I kind of was thinking about it this morning it's like where God is preparing a harvest in a way like you, you kind of think of it like this like there is uh, I continue to share often there are thousands thousands of people around us right now that don't know Jesus thousands of people around us that don't know Jesus and um, through this the simple act of just giving out food um, sometimes it's stressful sometimes it's not um, sometimes we're having a lot of fun doing it but through that act we are literally building bridges with the community and God is literally preparing um, these people's hearts we're making connections with them and, and in a way I'm just I'm excited to see what God's going to do through all this I really think this is only the start of it and I do think we're going to see um, amazing things happen from this um, maybe some of even our, our, our vision statement um, is that we would see our community transformed by the gospel and I really do think maybe this is a part of it I'm praying that this is and so um, this week we're going to be at Vestry Memorial Park, 11.30 to 1.30 on Saturday, I would encourage all of us to come out, even, even if you're you, you, you don't have to serve. Just come get free food. But just kind of see what God is doing. Be a part of it. And um, it's fun. I have a lot of fun doing it. So um, I said, come on out. I don't know what we're doing food this week, but um, it's always really good. So that should be a reason enough just to come out and join us. So um, like I said, other announcements in the, in the worship guide, I would encourage you to look at them because some of them are very important. Um, but I'm going to pray for us, and we'll dive in this morning. Uh, Lord God, thank you for uh, gathering us here. Um, thank you that we can be in this place. Well, I do pray the rain holds off. Uh, I don't know if it is going to rain or not. I didn't think it was, but we got some dark clouds over us, God, so I pray that, that would not uh, hinder us from um, diving into your word this morning, Lord. Um, I, I pray for every one of us in this place as we get into um, Psalm chapter 50, God, that you would encourage us, uh, convict us, uh, challenge us, do whatever, God, you want to do in our hearts this morning, Lord. Um, I do pray for our community. I pray for all the, all the what you want to call it, God, the, the division, just the, the fear that we find all around us, God. And I pray that you uh, would glorify yourself in all of this, God. All this, the, all this, Everything going on um, in our world right now, God, you would glorify yourself through this. Um, and when you use us and use other churches as well, God, in our community, um, in, in our country, in our world, God, uh, to see a true... Uh, Revival, Lord. Um, I mean, thank you. I pray. Uh, I want to pray specifically. Um, I know there's a bunch of uh, needs in our church and a lot of people dealing with different things, but uh, something that I know is pending very soon is uh, Dakota uh, Sheets, her surgery. God, I pray that, that would uh, go well. And God, you would 
you do your will through it. God, I pray you give comfort and peace to the family. I know this is really troubling them right now, God, and um, I just pray for healing, that Lord. And for everyone else, I know there's more and more things, God, we can, we can mention, and I just pray for all of us, for our health, everything, God, in, in, our, in our body, um, and still work through us, Lord. And we love you, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so, like I said, we are in Psalm chapter 50 this morning. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. Um, if you are new with us, uh, I do. I have people asking me often what translation I read out of. It's the ESV. So um, if you have that, if you're on your tablet or whatever you are on your phone, I'm on the ESV. Uh, we also have Bibles. If you guys, anyone needs a Bible, uh, if you just want an ESV Bible, we got them on our welcome table for free. Take one. Make as many as you want, honestly. <laughs> so uh, they're free to take. So. Um, Psalm chapter 50, I'm going to read it, and then we are going to kind of unpack it. Psalm 50, uh, verse 1. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him is a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who, make a cov who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God your God. Not for your birth off... off no, not for your birth... Sorry. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continuing before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked God says, What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free reign for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother, and you slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay charge before you. Mark this, then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart, and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving and sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. All right. It's a long one, 23 verses, and it's definitely a harsh one. It's one that, um, just this week, honestly, in studying it, it's one that really smacks you across the face in a way, and I think a lot of us... Um, you're gonna feel it. You're, you're gonna feel it this morning. I'm sorry. Um, this is the text we're on. So, um, we are in a series for you guys that are new. I didn't explain this, but we're in a series going through the Book of Psalms. It's a series of challenges. The challenge is to read a psalm every single day. On Sunday, we will go over that psalm that we're on uh, that day. So this week, Psalm 50. Next week, Psalm 57. And so I encourage you to to follow along. Read a psalm every single day if you get behind. Read two. It's they only take about a minute and a half to read. Don't take a long time. So I encourage you to read, read it. So Psalm 50 is written by um, you can see in the headlines Asaph. And just to explain this out really quick, the same as last week when we had the sons of Korah, Asaph w would have been basically like a worship leader in the temple. Asaph was a worship leader in the temple during the time of David, and so uh, he would have. Uh, written songs, he would have written, he's very poetic, so he would have written, written poems, um, put melody to uh, many of these the, the psalms. Also, what's interesting about this psalm, uh, you probably already noticed, is that it actually reads, especially when you get into starting in verse 5 and then in verse 7 to the end, it reads like a prophecy in a way. Uh, it, it's, it's actually God speaking to his people through a human vessel through a human being. So God's speaking to his people in the majority of this verse, uh, this, this chapter. And uh, like I said, it, the, or what you've already heard, what he is speaking is very, very harsh. 
And, and what, what we can see in this psalm to kind of break, I want to break this all down for us and help us really understand what God is saying uh, to his people and also to us today. The first six verses in this psalm, it, it sets up what God is going to say to his people and to us. And you look, at, and we're going like to unpack all this. So you look at the first six verses, what you see in the first line, verse 1, the mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. You see in that, that first line, the mighty one. The idea is, and you get this idea from the rest of this, this psalm, is that there's no one like God. He is the mighty one. He is God the Lord. There's no other one like him. And the question you ask, though, and the rest of the psalm is going to explain, why is he mighty? Why is he the, why is he the mighty one? Why, what, what is it about God that makes him the mighty one? And, and in the situation is, I don't know if some of you guys can relate to this, but when I was not walking with Christ, when I was uh, living a total opposite life uh, than the life I'm living now, I would take for granted what I see. You know, like I, I would see beautiful landscapes, and I would see all this stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, so what? But the more and more I grow with Christ, the more I'm just like, wow. Like, ever just sit and you see something, like even as simple as like, like this, this week, um, I was, uh, I've been trying to take walks in the morning in my backyard. I got a pretty big backyard. And I got a field up back. So I've been trying to kind of go out, do more prayer walking. Um, I love this time of year when it starts turning fall. I'm, I love fall. So uh, it, when it kind of the crisp morning is getting outside and walking. And this, just this week, something I've just seen all throughout my life is something that just kind of caught my attention this week. The, the field, the, I have a bunch of white flowers in my field. And I think they're actually weeds, but they just, there's something about them. That day, the sun was peeking up over uh, the trees, and there's all these little butterflies all throughout the field. And I'm just sitting this one. I mean, I've seen many of, of your Facebook posts or other people's Facebook posts that you, know, you take a picture of a sunset and you say, look at my uh, God's artwork. And it's great, right? We, we love that stuff. Like, yes, like that's, that's right. Look at God's artwork. But as we've covered, we went over Psalm 29. Like, I've never seen a picture of a Facebook post with a, with a picture of a hurricane or, or a fire, the idea of a hurricane, a mighty tempest, the idea i never seen a picture of that and, and, and saying, see, our God does not keep silent. Like verse 3 says. Like our God does not keep silent. Like, he, like we said in Psalm 29, we went over this. God's power and might is seen in storms as well as beautiful landscapes. And, and these verses, these verse 3 through 6, they give a clear description of God's judgment. A description that's going to carry out till the rest of the psalm. It's going to carry its way out. It's going to really give us a description that we all need to hear. And a description that, the, like I said, God's really going to speak to his people. And the description is, is God's judgment is all-consuming. His might is seen in judgment, and his judgment is all-consuming. Like verse 3, just, 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 the, just the, the line, before him is a devouring fire. Around him is a mighty tempest. Like the mighty tempest, like I said, that's the idea of a windstorm. But that, those two things, those two descriptions, are to portray God's all-consuming judgment. Like just think about a, a, a fire for a minute, or a forest fire, or even a house fire. You can't hide from it. I mean, yeah, if someone warns you the fire is coming, you can run, you can get out of it, but if, but if you're in the middle of it, there's no getting out. You can't get out. Same thing, hurricane or tornado. Like, if you don't listen to the weatherman's warning that there is a storm coming, you better leave your house and go run. If you're still in the middle of it, there's no place to go. You just got to hunker down and hope you can make it through. That's it. The idea is it's, it's all-consuming. Anything in a fire's path is going to be consumed. Anything in a hurricane's path will be consumed, or a tornado. It's going to be wrecked and destroyed. Then verse 4, it's the same idea. You see it again. He calls the heavens above to the earth, that he may judge his people. It's the idea you can't, you can't hide. Whether you're in heaven or you're on earth, and it basically in all of God's creation, which is everything you see and everything we can't see, past the heavens, in all of it, you can not run or hide from God's all-consuming judgment. God will judge all people. 
all people. And I know that when I, when I, I bring this out, we're, we're all just like, it does something in us. We don't love hearing this. But it's the truth. It's the truth. It makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't always like talking about it. But we have to understand God's judgment is going to consume every single one of us. And God's judgment, as this psalm is definitely betraying to us, it will destroy. And this is true. I mean, it, throw up two verses here. One that many of us have heard. Romans 3.23 All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short. Every single one of us. This is why we all will be judged. Every person will be judged. Romans 6.23 The wage of sin is death. There is judgment. And we all deserve God's judgment of wrath for the sin we have done. Every one of us deserve this. I'm really starting off on a very happy note, aren't I? <laughs> so I'm going to say I said, I'm, I love preaching God's word. Sometimes you get tough ones. This is the way it is. But but listen, it, it, this is like it, is, it starts off this way, but, but the, way, the psalm is going to end on this beautiful note because there's always a but. Even this first six verses, there's a but here. And there's a but because of Jesus. As, as the psalm points out, they're, 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 we're all going to receive God's judgment. We're all going to receive it. But, but instead of, we have a way to, instead of receiving a judgment of wrath, we can receive mercy and grace because of God's mighty love for us. Then, and this is the idea when he like said, verse 5, Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me, with me by sacrifice. To the heavens declare his righteousness, God himself is judged. The idea is gather my people. Gather my people. And, and celebrate. Verse 6 is meaning celebrate my judgment. Can you imagine? Like we, we just talked about God's judgment. Like we can, <laughs> celebrating God's judgment is probably not what you're thinking about when you understand of the judgment of wrath, right? That's not what you're thinking. It sounds weird to think that, that, that we're going to get God's gathering his people to rejoice and celebrate. Our God is judge. Our God has judged all people. But it's not really that weird when you understand God's judgment. It's not. In the following verses, we're going to unpack the rest of this, this today, is God is going to speak to his people, and what we're going to find is a way that we can celebrate the judgment of God. We can all celebrate in the judgment of God. And also a very important warning we're going to find in this text. All, what one that we all need to hear before the all-consuming judgment comes for every single one of us. We all will be judged. So verse 7, start pulling what God has to say to, to us and to the people of Israel in this time. Verse 7, he says, Hear, O my people, I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. And God starts to speak to his people. And, and notice just how he speaks to his people. It's intimate, right? Hear, O my people, I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. So I'm going to testify against you, meaning I'm going to judge you, but, but I am your God. I am your God. You are my people. I, I love you. I am, I am saying this for your benefit. I'm saying this so, so you can understand that judgment is coming. And a very important thing to understand here is this, this is written. God is speaking to his people, not to the world. So he's speaking to, in this, this time period, to the people of Israel, and to now he's speaking to us as Christians. This is God speaking to his people. And this is coming, understand, from a place of love, not hatred, not anger. It's coming from a place of love. In verse 8 we find, not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continuing before me. We find that, that basically the idea God's setting up, he's not happy with his people. He has a rebuke against them. And the rebuke, understand, like the psalm says, it's not because of their sacrifice or burnt offerings. They're, they're giving those regularly. God has commanded them to give these, these sacrifices to, to him, and they are doing this. It's important to note here, this is the old covenant. We don't give sacrifices of bulls and goats anymore. 
But in this time period, they would give sacrifices to be forgiven of their sin, to please God in a way. They had to offer all these sacrifices up to God. And these sacrifices many times would be bulls, goats, birds, uh, sometimes financial sacrifices, but it would happen all throughout the year. And this is why God speaks to them in verse 9 through 13. So they're, they're giving all the sacrifices rightly. And understand this. They're giving all the sacrifices rightly. And I'm going to change this so we can understand what this means for us in today, today's environment. But verse 9 through 13, I want to read this again. And I, o- I almost chuckle when I read this in a way. I will not accept your bowls from your house and your goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that move, moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? That's it. I, I chalk it away because what God is, is saying to his people is, do, do you really think I need that bull that you killed? You really think that I want to eat that? Like, you really think I need that? Like, I spoke that bowl into existence. I could put another one right down in front of you. Like, you think I really needed that? Everything is mine, he's saying. Like, do you, do you really think I was hungry and I, really, I wanted a T-bone steak? Like, that's why you need to kill the bowl for me. Like, like, no, that's not it. If I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Like, do you really think... I even eat like you, God is saying. Everything is mine. The idea here is, is kind of like, I thought about this week, it's like at Christmas time um, when you give your kids money to buy you gifts, right? You know, like, like, <laughs> like it's kind of really crazy when you think about it, but uh, I know my parents, we, we can think to ourselves that if the more I sacrifice, the more I do for God, the more he is pleased with me. And obviously, this is not new. And I'm not even trying to say, I mean, obviously, reading your Bible, going to church, uh, raise your hand in worship, all that is great. Like, yes, do that. I'm not trying to say none of that is right. None of that is wrong. But the heart of it, it's the heart that matters. And like I said, this is not new. It's spoken in Psalm 50. God's trying to portray this to us, written 3,500 years ago, 1,500 years in the, in the future from this, when the psalm was written. Jesus is trying to bring up the same point. Luke chapter 21, 21 verse 1 through 4. The story of the widow and her, and her couple coins. Jesus looked up and saw, a ri- saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put two small copper coins and he said, Truly I tell you, the poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Like, get the picture of what's happening. You see, and you can see what God thinks of, of sacrifices. Like the rich. And understand, in this time, the rich were considered the elite. They were considered the ones that were closest to God because they had all the money. They could offer the best sacrifices. So while some people were putting in a couple coins like this woman, is, woman, woman was, the rich would come over with the big sacks of money and drop it in and be, look at me. Look what I've given to God. Look how great I am. And everyone else is thinking, wow, look at that. Look at those rich. Man, they, they are, must be the closest to God in all of us. And then comes this widow who drops two coins in and Jesus flips it all on his head. He says, that woman right there has given far more than any of them. And you can imagine people here and they're thinking, what are you talking about, Jesus? What do you mean by that? And Jesus is saying exactly what God is saying in Psalm 50. In essence, I don't need your money. I don't need your money. I don't need you. I don't need your sacrifices. I don't, I don't need you. But I want you. It's different. I want you and I want your heart. I want your heart. This is obviously, you see this, and this is what God's trying to portray in, in verse 14 and 15 before God really speaks his rebuke to him. Verse 14 15, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I'll deliver you, and you shall glorify me. 
The idea is offer your sacrifice with pure motives, with thankfulness, with love, with humility. Make your vows to him. Make him your God. Run to him when you are troubled and nothing else. Rely on his might and his strength and above all things. Like I, I was just, even, even this verse 15 this week just really hit me. I was meditating on, on, on this passage. And, and if you just think about it for a minute, it's, it's so incredible who uh, our God. Like God wants you to call upon him when you are in trouble. He wants you to cry out to him. He is not bothered by you. He's not bothered by you. Very important for some of us to understand here because sometimes we have this idea that God is like us, like our dad and mom, who, who something against your brother and you slander your own mother's house. Like it, it, God's saying you have no right to call yourselves children of God. Why? Because you have rejected God's ways. You hate discipline. You hate his word. You, anything in here that, that makes you kind of like, I don't like that, you reject it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to listen to you, God. I don't want nothing of that. Instead, you want to live your own life. You want to live the way you want to live. Consumed with money, greed. Consumed with, I mean, the idea is you, you sit with, with adulterers, with thieves. You're consumed with sex and pleasure. You do not hold back tongue, your tongue. You gossip, you curse, you use crude jokes, you even hurt others with the vo words you use. You burst of anger that when you have these, you just say the most awful and terrible things to people. Rejecting God's ways. And the wicked, they thought, like it says in verse 21, these things you have done and I have been silent. You thought I was one like yourself. The idea is, is, and I really want us to listen to this because, it, because we can start to think right now of other people, but I want, I want us to look inside of our own heart. I know there's wickedness in my life. I know this week, if looking at my own self, I know in every single one of us in here, there's wickedness in us. The idea is, is you thought by offering me the right sacrifices, by marking all the boxes on the checklist, that, that I would look past these sins. You thought that being a good Christian, whatever, whatever that means, right, being a good Christian, I would not judge you harshly. You thought that I was like you. You thought that you could, that you thought that you could bribe me. You thought that, 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 you, that, that, that you could mislead me. You thought that you could deceive me, charm me by your gifts. You're wrong. You're wrong, God's saying. I am not like you. I'm not like you. I know your heart. I know your motives. And now I rebuke you. I rebuke you because of this. And I'm giving, and God's doing this, rebuking them. He's doing this because he's giving them this warning to change. It's not out of, it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, there's some anger coming from God, righteous anger, but he's saying this because I want you to change. I want you to stop doing these things. Like I said, there's not one of us in this place that does not need to hear this. Not one of us. Normally, like I, I, I mean, even this week, and I was reading, I was trying, I was trying to think of other people. Stop. Like Jesus says, take the plank out of your own eye before you start looking at the speck in your brother's eyes. Like we all got a giant log hanging out of our eye right now. I mean, if we, if we could see what God sees. It's like this giant, thick telephone pole sticking out of our eye. Pull that thing out. Evaluate your own life before you start looking at someone else's. In the last two verses here, God gives us this, this, this final warning, and, and it is so amazing what God does in verse 22 and 23. It says, Mark this. Then you who forget God, lest I tear you apart, and there be none to deliver. And that line right there, just whew. Like he says, Mark this, meaning, listen up. Like, I'm, I'm being serious now. Like, listen to me right now. You who live a life forgetting God. You living a life with no fear of God. No fear of a God that is judged. Listen up. God's saying, I hate sin. And I hate evil. And I will destroy all evil in sin with my wrath. God's saying. 
in this one line, verse verse 22, like it, it just it hits you. Lest I tear you apart, and there be none to deliver you. Like that just makes your hair stand up on on your hand and your leg. You just read that. It's like, wow! It makes you think for a moment. There's none to deliver you, and it, it is also. As Christians, I really want us to think about this. It needs to cause sorrow in us. Because there's so many around us. If we're just talking about with the food cart, like there's so many around us who have forgotten God. That will that want no part of Him. They reject Him in every chance they get. And as Christians, this has to break us. This has to. The fact there are a thousand people around us right now that are rejecting God. And it, as this psalm is pointing out, there's judgment coming for every single one of us. Can't run from it. It's all consuming. And God's judgment is just. It's perfect. And He will reward people their due penalty. Those that reject God will receive God's rejection. It's justice. Simple. But, in verse 23, just to end this song, those that offer this thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. This is what this, this, this is saying. To the one that offers God his heart as a sacrifice, the right sacrifice. As Romans 12 points out, it's a living sacrifice. It's your life. It's your life. You offer him your life. You say, you are my king. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. I want to live a life serving you with my heart, not out of bad motives, not because if I do a checklist, you're going to let me go into heaven. No, I want you, Jesus. And God says, if you live, you order your way rightly, meaning you follow him. That's ordering your way rightly. It's not a checklist. It's living with Jesus. That's what it is. I will show you salvation of God. I will show you salvation. I will show you, I will show you how you can be saved from the wrath of God. And it's only found in Jesus. Only found in Jesus. And this is the gospel, guys. This is it. The gospel meaning good news. The good news is we can be made right with God. We can be saved from the wrath of God that we all deserve. Because, listen, the truth of the matter is, we have all forgotten God. Every one of us. We've all forgotten Him. Probably this morning even. <laughs> Probably if it wasn't this morning, it was yesterday. We've all have forgotten God, and we've all have gone the wrong way. We've all rebelled. But, Jesus, but through Jesus' death, through him going to the cross and taking on all of God's wrath upon himself. All of it. He took the penalty that we deserved for rejecting God. And when he rose from the grave, he showed and proved that evil was conquered and sin was paid for once and for all. And listen, if anyone declares the mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the, de from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. To end this, I, I just want to put this out there. You, you want to know God's power. You want to know the mighty one as the psalm set it up. Like, do you want to know the mighty one? The creator, the one that created all this right now. The, the might is seen in creation. You want to celebrate in God's judgment. Because you know that His judgment, when He looks on you, He's going to receive, because if we have given our life over to Christ, we are walking with Jesus. When He looks at us, He will no longer see the imperfection in our life. He will see Christ. And He will receive mercy and, and grace instead of judgment. That's why we can rejoice in His judgment. If you want to know God, run to Him. Run to Him with your heart. Rely on Him. He wants you. 
And he wants you not because of what you can give him. Very important to understand that. It's not for what you can give him or do for him. He wants you for you. It's amazing. Totally opposite the way we think as humans. God is not like us. Very important to understand. He wants you for you. As messed up as all of us are. He wants you. Let's bow our head and let's, let's pray. Father, um, I just I want to just thank you, Lord, just for the fact that you do want us. I had something just, if you just sit there and think about it, I mean, why would you want us? <laughs> Let's be honest, man. We're, we are screwed up people. We are wicked. We forget you. We constantly, every one of us, reject you often. But God, you want us. You want our heart. And there's nothing we can do to honestly please you except for giving you our heart. God, I pray in this, in this place right now, God, that we would give you our heart, non-Christian and Christian in the room. doesn't matter, all of us. Maybe some of us for the first time, we're crying out to God and say, God, I'm giving you my heart right now. I want you in my life. I pray you do that. Your spirit is work in people's lives right now, God. But just even us as Christians, that we, we're called your people. Show us where we have done wrong and help us run to you and want to change. God, do a work in every one of our lives, God. And now that we just think about the, just our community around us, God, I, I pray, God, this message, this message right here, that you want us, that message will just go through past this, this lawn, past this church, and will reach our community, God. For the thousands of people that don't know you, God, they will just through your spirit, even right now in this moment, they would get an overwhelming sense that you want us. That you want them. Thank you, God. Thank you. And use us, God, in all of this, Lord. We love you, in Jesus, and I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Um, uh, if you are new, I'd love to meet you. Um, but... If uh, if you have to run, I get it. Um, but anyways, we are going to be.